Jason. You called the meeting. I called the meeting. So basically we need to talk about what new products, promotions, Kickstarters we should be working on. What we did last year is we kind of made a calendar and we did not stick to it at all, but it was at least helpful to be like, yeah, here's <laughs> yeah. the Kickstarters we want to work on. Here's like a bunch of promotion ideas. And we probably did half of them, I would say. Um, It'd be interesting to look at. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of broke it down into Kickstarters, promotions. Wow, you got a lot. That's a long I list. Have a, I have a whole oh fucking, oh, there's a lot. Kickstarters. Okay. <clears throat> Start listing out some Kickstarters. Kickstarters, GM screen. It is one of our biggest requested Kickstarters. Could be pretty big. Classic adventuring party. So Cap was our most successful promotion of the year. I think it was our most successful promotion it, maybe ever. ever. It, that has been our most successful promotion yeah. we've ever run. Wow. My question is like, why don't we just put it on the website for sale at all times? Yeah, mm. we, we could do that. I, I have two ideas for Cap. One, we do a full-fledged Kickstarter. We do all 13 classes. Or what could be fun is every single month we do a new class. And Come it's like a year-long promotion. If we did all the classes across all the products and they just went on the website for sale at all times, Times, that, that's a ton of skews that's to maintain. Yeah. That would yes. be a lot of inventory. Yeah. It sounds like we're all in agreement that Classic Adventuring Party or Cap should work as <clears throat> promos slash Christmas. All right, what's the next Kickstarter? Uh, next Kickstarter, Dice 3.0. We got two options. So what's the version one? V1 is basically we have the dice in inlay pairings. So like resin with resin, yep. gemstone with gemstone, metal with metal. Towers. What's version two of Dice 3.0? Dice towers, trays, okay. just like heavily lean into so, that. So more yeah. accessories. Yeah. Classic board games. Chess, checkers, go, Mancala, cribbage, backgammon. Just a grab bag of- No way. Modular stylus or modular writing utensils. Oh, Basically a okay. writing system where we have like the wood body and you can switch out mechanical pencil, pen, sketch pencil, pencil pens, yeah. styluses for a tablet, stuff like that. That's actually it interesting. It could be, yeah. and that's something like, there's a lot of people that do writing stuff that aren't gamers. Yeah. Could be a new audience. Sit stand desks. That's the winner. Pretty, mm -hmm. that's a pretty obvious winner, but it's also like the largest lift. This, I think would be bigger than modular game tables. Yeah. I think the audience is bigger and there's more demand for them. Modular Game Table 2.0. And the big push for that would be very fast turnaround. And we could launch that and be like, in two months, you will receive your table, which would be huge. Yes, yeah. so I think we could relaunch Modular Game Table with just new accessories. I think people would be stoked. Adding new seating is going to be a lift. That would be huge yeah. if we it, could pull yeah, it off. It would, that would be a huge and it, yeah. Everyday carry. That's a new business. That's, a That's not even a Kickstarter. <laughs> That's just a new business. Yeah. It's big. It's big, and I also don't think it's within our current skill set as yeah. much as. Well, videos. is there anything else? Halloween. We've done Corrupted a lot. I want to do Memento Mori. It's like this, I don't know, it's some it's Victorian thing. It's like, remember that you're going to die. Charlie at Artisan put out a uh, set of Memento Mori dice, which were made from human bones. Yeah. I'm even thinking we could do like inlaid vaults or something with like skulls or skeletons or skull stuff. I don't know. What's up, Bobby? You're late. Hey. Oh, Bobby. Come join us. You were invited to this. Oh. <laughs> a, that's not a product. That's just like a vibe. Sure, which would guide us to what the products are, which is kind of what we do with Halloween anyways. This is, this, this is when it becomes a waste of time. Why are we thinking that far ahead? It's like a boxer. It's like a boxer doesn't think, oh, well, six minutes from now, this is where I'm gonna be. Like you can only think like three or four punches ahead. I think that was our mistake last year. Like last year we were like, here's exactly what we're doing for the year. And it was a disaster. It just like, Miss deadline, miss deadline, miss deadline. And then our most successful promotion of the year, Cap, was not on the original schedule at all. No. It was actually it was because the schedule got fucked up so bad. We've got three kick-ass designers. What are the three biggest opportunities? And then we should just hit those opportunities. It's like we've got Jason, Bennett, and we've got Crazy Ed. Those are the people that can actually do things. Here's a bunch of good ideas. What fits with who? So, prophecy. These are in line with prophecies. Yes. The, the same level, the same price points. High-end chairs. We're already working yep, on it. Already. Hexagonal gaming table. We kind of started it. High end that. chair. I like it. <clears throat> um, X table. Yeah, specifically, I like it. Keep going. Anything um, else on that? 
high-end coffee table, gaming desk. I'm thinking more traditional. Executive like a, PC gaming desk? Yeah. I mean, there are like fucking lawyers that game. Yep. In terms of promotions, you want promotions. to Promotions. Like laser marketry. Deck boxes. Hear me out on this one. All right. Jenga. <laughs> we have so it. we have so <laughs> much fucking rippings and ways. It's great. Yeah. I think it should be a variety of woods. Yeah. We have a variety of waste. Yeah. yeah. That that would be the hard part. We have a variety of waste. <laughs> Jenga by yeah. Wormwood. <laughs> you get a Jenga set of all these different woods, and then you have like a little guide that has all the different species and facts about the woods. Oh, you know, yeah. right? You want to know? That's that's, that's I think the. You want to know your twist yeah. on it too? There could also be a thing where it's just like. Purple Heart is worth X points. Like, uh, they, yeah. they have different values or a something. Stuff, yeah, like a, like yeah. a variant score. It's like Twister, right? You have like a color yeah. wheel and you spin and it lands on purple and it's like, you gotta take Purple Heart. It's like, fuck. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You could play either way. Yeah. You could like make it what you want. And then you mm -hmm. learn the woods as you play this game. Yeah. It's educational. Yep. And then everyone. I like it. All right, Jenga, I think Jenga. that's gonna hit. That's, um, that's good. What else um, you UV pens. Those are kick-ass. What the fuck are you talking UV about? UV pens. What the fuck oh, are you can like write, writer You pens. can write and then, like, like a secret message, and then you get a UV and it's just like, there it is. Stupid. <laughs> so where I am right now is what I've been put, pushing on is Dice 3.0 resin accents. I think that is what Bennett should work on. I mean, it's sort of between that and GM I, screen. I think GM screen's better. No, there's nobody making a good high-end GM screen. I agree with that. So here's my question. Which actually brings in more revenue to the company? Dice 3.0 or GM screen? Probably Dice 3.0. So it's like you're going to work harder for a smaller prize. I worry about the, the sourcing and the newness of the resin and stuff. We got to be really good at sourcing. We got to be really good at developing a completely new process and like aspect of crafting. And we're traditionally not great at incorporating new things into our manufacturing. We're also not traditionally great at jam screens. <laughs> so, <laughs> both of these are gonna be a huge problem if they blow up and are successful and we have to scale them. Well, it's always a problem. Success yeah. is always a problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's fine. Is anybody else excited about this? Dice. Because that also goes a long way. I'm not excited as much for Dice 3.0 as I am to like work with Karen again. And I think that's gonna be really fun and I think it would create some really cool content. I'm more excited about Res than that. I don't know, I don't care about the GM screen anymore. I kind of hate it. Like it's just been, <laughs> like we made it. It was a nightmare. It was one of our least backed campaigns. It made a lot of money because it was very expensive. It's self-limiting in a way that a lot of things aren't. The the resin capability, if we can pull it off, I think has a lot of potential in almost anything else we do, which is really exciting. How about this? Let me attack this from a different angle. Sure. Can we charge twice as much for these resin accent vaults? Because we're gonna have to like do all the work for the sure. vault and all the work for the resin. Yeah. Put them together, it's gonna be twice as much money. Yeah, I think so. I don't see why not. And I think we will have higher volume. You think we'll have higher volume with twice the price? Yes, I actually do. Because Save, that actually, yeah. Save that clip. Save that clip. You know what sold better in, in Dice 2 than any of our Dice vaults? Uh, which were normal price was the two hundred dollar ebony ones with the holographic flake. Those those, those sold the most by volume. Yeah, we by sold units. more more units of those than we did ours. Yeah, that's what I'm they saying. Is I, I I think people want things that are compelling, and I think they're willing to just pay for it. So Bennett resin, <coughs> Jason sit stand desk deck box. I actually crazy Ed is doing the the chairs, high end chairs currently. I actually think after high end chairs, I actually am interested in him doing high end hex table. The fucking prophecy is doing the Lord's work in this company. <laughs> like it is carrying this company. The Prophecy is right now bringing in far more revenue than Wormwood Legacy. So I think we should be thinking about how to expand the high end. Question is, hex table, coffee, coffee table, table, or a PC slash executive desk. We have Not the, sit stand, just like classic. Do we have the production bandwidth in Pennsylvania to take on more? Yes. Do we have space yeah. for it? Yes. Yep, I think so, for sure. I'm team hex. Like, it's actually requested. I the, would go- The hex were like halfway through. We yeah. have a prototype down there. I bet you people don't even know that that exists. Nope. That was so long ago. Ignore all the bullshit down here. It's gonna be pretty cool bringing it back. So we're all excited about that. So Crazy Ed is gonna finish up the high-end chairs. Yep. Then he's gonna, then he's gonna pivot to hex. What's the next big Kickstarter we're doing? Is the next big Kickstarter Sit stand desk, or is it modular gaming 2.0? Sit stand desk is gonna be a long time to develop and then a long time mm. to get going into production. I'm worried like if we wrap up modular game table before we're ready to hit the ground running on sit stand, 
are we laying off 40 people? Yeah. This is going to be quicker to develop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can just keep the train rolling. I think they're both going to be big projects with lots of air gaps. Quick. So yeah, in terms of the sit stand desk and M modular yeah. game table 2.0, we could just determine which we want to launch based on how modular game table production is going and how, how development is going. Yeah. We can just actually just be flexible. We don't need to kill ourselves. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Are we good on this? Generally. Yep. Whoa, whoa.